So how do you know if somebody has an MBA? Well, the chances are that they will tell you. They also use a completely different language. They don't have problems anymore. They have issues and improvement opportunities. You want to slap them sometimes, don't you? But for many, the MBA is a lifeline to a better future. How important and how relevant is it, though, in the 21st century? Join me, John Foster Petley. He hasn't walked out yet, director and dean at the Henley <laughs> Business School, and Colette Sabanovitz, who's founder of MBA Connect. Dot net. I'm Bruce Whitfield. I do not have an MBA, but you are watching tonight. Um, Colette, uh, just give me a sense of what it is you do, because you used to be in the Gibbs system, if I memory serves. Yes, yes. Um, I did my Gibbs MBA about seven years ago, but uh, currently I uh, manage MBA Connect, a social network for MBAs. So it's like LinkedIn, but for people who've either done the MBA or are currently studying one. Or struggling to finish the thesis. That too, exactly. yes. <laughs> I, think, I think probably the biggest stumbling block for any MBA, they love the courses, they love the group work, when it comes to mm. actually putting it all down on paper, a lot of people just don't bother finishing, um, which is a pity ultimately as well, because they've, the, they've done the hard yards. John, how, how relevant is the MBA uh, come 2014? Well, I think it depends on the MBA you do. I mean, we were talking just before about the difference between INSEAD, Harvard and local schools. And um, you, on, one le on one hand, you get MBAs with a massive reputation and you go there to get the badge of Harvard or INSEAD. But the question I ask myself is how useful are they and what's the purpose of a business school anyway? Because surely it's not about just giving people badges and elite positions, but it's about developing skills that help us build businesses that build a better Africa. And the good business schools will be contextualized so that they help you build the skills for the area in which they're in. Uh, I suppose it also depends on your ambitions. If you have global ambitions, you're going to want to get the INSEAD or the Harvard badge, as opposed to a Witts Business School, a Henley or a Gibbs, for example, simply because those are globally more recognized. Well, yes, I, I have to just say that Henley is an international business school. Okay, so forgive we, me. We but, um, but having said that, all the business schools in South Africa are good. You know, uh, all the leading ones, so we say, are good. And um, you've got a really good choice in South Africa. So whether to go for a global one or a local one is an interesting question. What I would do is, before you look at rankings or anything else, go and visit the school and see what it feels like. Is this somewhere that you would feel comfortable being with? Is it stimulating you? And is it accredited or is it just big on rankings? If you've got, say, double or triple accreditation, which means that international bodies have audited you and told you what you're not good at and made you improve, then you know you're building your degree on a solid qualification. Mm, and that's the thing. Also, if I could pay 100,000 Rand for an MBA, whatever an MBA costs now, 100,000 Rand roughly for a year? More than that, sometimes up to 200 in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. 200 these days for a in South Africa. One. I better come out of that course <laughs> with, a, with, with a job three layers higher than I've got right now because I've got to pay it back at some point, don't I? Well, that's, that's the perception that you would just walk into a job. And it's often, we, we encounter this a lot with, when people join MBA Connectors. They think they're just going to walk into the six figure salary position. And it doesn't happen. It's, you've still got to take the attitude and the learning and all the skills that you've, you've acquired on the MBA and you've got to market yourself and you've got to become that candidate that then can get that job. It's not just going to fall into your lap. If you treat it as the badge, um, you mm. are doomed to failure. And I, I've seen exactly. lots of MBAs exactly. graduate, hand in their theses, get distinctions and uh, get you know, golden robes and all that sort of stuff. And they walk out of there. They walk into a top job in the South African corporate and six months later they're out on their ear because actually mm. they were terribly good at the academic stuff when it came to doing the work. Um, they fell short. And, that, and that's the real risk, I suppose, of believing the PR behind the, the MBA. It depends on your attitude when you go in. Exactly that. And also what we found is in the recent uh, the FinWeek MBA Life Impact Survey mm. that we did last year, we found that a, a, a growing percentage of people are doing the MBA in order to become entrepreneurs. You know, if you look at 2009, um, when we surveyed MBA Connect, 29% of our members were entrepreneurs. In the 2013 FinWeek survey, 54% uh, were entrepreneurs. So it's, there's been massive growth in that area and a lot more people are doing an MBA not to go into corporate. Uh, and that's also really, I know, and forgive me for using the example, but Gibbs mm. does the entrepreneurial MBA. You guys have just launched an, an artsy MBA where if you are Johnny Clegg 30 years ago and you want to learn how to run the business of Savuka and then uh, of Jaluka and then Savuka, um, you go off and you go and do your MBA and theoretically you become your own manager ultimately. Well, that's exactly it. In fact, Johnny Clegg is kindly um, putting his name behind a scholarship, so we're delighted with that. Um, but that's the point, isn't it? You know, growth doesn't come necessarily from the old smokestack or extractive industries. It comes from what's up here. It's intellectual capital, imagination, 
in business, we have to create value for people, don't we? We have to create value for our clients. And that doesn't come from just learning to be analytical. It also comes from learning to be imaginative. So we can, we can learn from those different industries. And those industries are also drivers of growth. They tend to grow at about the, the creative industry, about six times the underlying economy in growth time. So stimulate those. And besides, it's more fun, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, so we're going to have a great, great industry with lots of IB young people doing MBAs and learning. You know. yeah, well, we certainly hope so because it is a disaster yeah. zone for so many people. Exactly. You see artists who, who go past their sell-by date um, mm. at the age of 22 or whatever yeah. when they, their yeah. song was last played on the radio, and they, they become doomed simply because they don't have any real skills to take forward into the future. Yeah, and if you're going to do an industry, you might as well learn the mechanics and the drivers of that industry. And a good MBA doesn't just make you learn from books. It makes you argue and talk, and it builds your creative and com you know, cognitive complexity and allows you to make complicated decisions in difficult situations. And that's what you need to do with an MBA. So if you have an MBA that's applied and assignment driven rather than purely academic driven, it does deliver to what Colette's talking about, becoming more entrepreneurial. But if you go to a classic MBA, which is just purely academic, you can't learn these skills without practice. Sure. So a good MBA lets you try something and practice it. And so you improve those skills over time. And you come out different, which is why people say at the end of the MBA, it has changed their lives, and why it's actually quite hard to quantify. Because somebody might go and do an MBA, and their salary might go down. Why? Because they've chosen to do something they believe in and they love. Oh, we don't want to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there would, I mean, in an ideal world, if more of us did it, absolutely right. But I, I pick up Fortune magazine on any given month, and there will be the, the tragic story of the American who went off to Harvard and is now 55, who can't afford his own kids' mm. college fees, and he's still paying off his own debt because he, he spent too much money um, getting a qualification which he didn't really want anyway. Well, you, you've got to know what you're getting into. And, and that's, I think, what we tried to look at holistically in the MBA Life Impact Survey. You know, the, the traditional surveys are focused on career advancement and remuneration, which is a very narrow view. The impact of the MBA, as John said, is on all areas of your life. And, and we looked at stress levels, um, so the negative impacts, stress levels, divorce, exercise levels, uh, relationships, etc. We looked at the positive impact in terms of your confidence, your ability to hold your own in a boardroom setting, your leadership ability mm. both on the job and in a personal capacity, and all of those. And understanding the impact that it has on all of those areas, which business school scores highest in the, in the area that's most mm. important to me. Yeah. So that when you've done the MBA, you know, you, you were informed what you were getting into. You, you need to you, interrogate the yes, process yes, before you go yes. into it. And you need mm. What were the issues that on MBA Connect, where these MBAs now they've graduated, they feel terribly clever, and now the, the hangover is worn off, <laughs> and the reality sets in that actually the hard work just begins because now you go with a piece of paper that says, I have an MBA, there's a different level of expectation when you enter the organization. I've met some complete idiot MBAs, um, let's Definitely. be honest about it, um, and, and some remarkable ones. Um, and, and, that, and that's the real thing. So what do, what do they talk about on mbaconnect.net uh, in terms of the issues post-qualification? Well, I, I think the most important one is understanding that it's, it's, it's just a piece of paper at the end of the day, and it's what you do with it that's mm. most important. And, and this is the breaking that perception that a lot of the PR around the business schools has created this marketing machine. So they're victims of their own success. Effectively, and yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you're yeah. not a good so agree. Well, I, I have so much empathy for what Colette's saying because um, one of the things people used to call an MBA was the Marriage Breakup Academy. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, everyone laughed it off, or the schools yeah. pretended that wasn't true. Well, Colette and her husband Gavin did some wonderful research that showed that the MBAs are very stressful. And at, at Henley, we, we figured pretty well in that because we have a very flexible MBA model that lasts for 30 months. And, um, but nonetheless, what we, we thought was, it's irresponsible, surely, if you're running a business school to take on board that you're not, you know, that you're damaging families, that you're causing problems to children or whatever. So surely we're smart enough to design learning that doesn't do that. Yeah. So we've launched a process called the Family Friendly MBA, which brings in the partners before we start and they talk to each other. And we try and create a community among the partners, which is the opposite of what you try to do. You don't want people to talk to each other before in case they raise problems. We want people to bring the problems now so we can adjust the process to make it family sensitive. So we then develop leaders who are not ruthlessly A-type, carving their way through, you know, the 
commerce feel, but they're actually creating, you know, creating organizations. You've got human soft beings. is what, what you're saying, John. No, it's not soft. <laughs> you know, soft is a new hard, Bruce. Soft no, but, is a new hard. Isn't that the problem? Because the perception of MBA is that, you know, you, you kiss your partner goodbye at the door and you see them a year later, um, if they're still there. I heard this terrible story. So come to the day one, take out a picture of your family, look at it, and then put it in your back pocket and don't look at it for two years. That's the opposite. These days, what we need to do is create families that can learn. If you want people to be creative, you can't have them in terror and fear and stress. What you have, people's minds are elastic. They need to imagine in a certain amount of peace and quiet and, and sort of comfort yeah. if you want good imagination. So we need to create MBAs and learning environments that are human friendly. Not, not inimical to families. And, and there is going to be disruption no matter what happens. There is mm. going to be a, a, an economic impact mm. no matter what happens. You've got to be able to make sure that that thing can pay for itself afterwards as well, whether it is um, mm. doing good things for your soul or whether it is exactly. making more money. Um, how, do we, how do we get the balance? Well, I'm glad you differentiate between the two because often an MBA is actually a turning point, a transition point in people's lives. And a lot of people take the MBA just so they can reflect well and talk to people, types of people they've never talked to. And there's a huge amount of learning in that process. So it's not quite sure what direction you're going to come out. Some people assess it on income increases. Now, the more senior the MBA, the less the pro rata income increase there is. So, you know, get lots of young people who are at the beginning of their career, give them an MBA and measure the amount of income increase. And that's how the rankings work. But yeah. real life works with trying to get people to release their capabilities and give them the courage and the confidence so that they will learn in different ways. What's the average age of your on. MBAs? Ours, ours, the one we do is around 37, 38. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a headhunter the yeah. other day who basically said, if somebody goes and does an MBA in their 40s, you don't hire them because they look desperate. Um, because <laughs> they've, hit, they've hit a stumbling block yeah. in their Bruce, career. Don't go and the that MBA, and, the, and the MBA <laughs> is, um, it, it looks like a cop-out. Comment? Well, you know, there is, there is some truth in that because on one level, in that if you're not sure what to do, you haven't succeeded. Look, let's say you go to a job interview and you fail. You can reward yourself by having a drink with a mate and saying, yeah, well, how bad it was. Or you can push yourself forward by analyzing what happened in that job interview, push yourself through some more discomfort. So some people will go to an MBA just because you know, they feel like they want to have that break. But you come to an MBA as an individual. You have to have an orientation when you come towards it. You have to want to learn. So get in there and learn. And good schools drive people to want to learn and grow themselves, not to sit there and just fill up a pro forma and get a badge. We want to build a new Africa. That means we need skills, Bruce. So we have, the MBAs have to orientate towards that. And put them work hard. Last, yeah. last if week. I can just add to what John said. Uh, Changing careers is for any age. Uh, being an entrepreneur is for any age. It's not limited to people who are young. So for me, someone who has the self-awareness to be able to say, these are the skills I'm lacking, these are, th this is, these are the areas I need to develop in and has the courage to do an MBA at that, that, that age, well, kudos to him. And I would mm -hmm. hire someone like that because of that self-awareness. I Bad think it makes... Hunter. Bad headhunter. Exactly. <laughs> I will have Bad a good headhunter. Head head hunter. <laughs> uh, that was Henley's Business School Director and Dean John Foster Pedley and Colette Samanovitz of mbaconnect.net. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Good night, and I hope we've given you food for thought. Thanks for watching. Good night.